Luminar AI template suggestions make photo editing a breeze. The artificial intelligence inside Luminar AI will suggest a set of templates that it thinks are appropriate for your photo and you can literally be done in one or two clicks. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to edit a landscape photo with the template suggested by Luminar AI, then see how to clean it up and finally add a vignette to finish. Watch and you'll see how I added some fog using Luminar AI's Atmosphere AI tool, and then demonstrate masking so that you can bring out some details of the main subject while keeping the rest of the photo looking fairly mystical. I started with this image and ended up with this. Want to see how? Keep watching and we'll get started in a moment. I'm Darlene from Digital Photo Mentor. I help beginning and intermediate photographers like you to improve your photography from capture right in the camera all the way through the editing process to the final product. What you're about to watch is a clip from one of my photo editing live streams here on my YouTube channel that I do each week. I edit subscriber submitted photos using my approach and my techniques and finally adding a touch of creative flair. If you want to improve your photo editing and make your images pop, just subscribe to the channel. Then you'll get a notice whenever I publish a new video and you won't miss a thing. I'm always looking for new subscriber photos to edit. You can use the form in the description area below to submit some of yours. Now, on to the demonstration. So first thing I did was I went to templates. So Luminar will suggest a set of templates for you based on what it thinks is in the image. Okay, so you hear it suggesting natural skies, landscape, and scenery. Makes sense to me, okay, because that's what it is, right? So it's done a good job of analyzing that, right? And I think the morning dew is the one I actually used. And all I did was I just started clicking through these because I had a vision for this image that I wanted to do something bluish, right? Um, now you can see that what's happening here when I did this one that you start to see the breakdown again and this is because it's a JPEG. Okay, So if I had the raw file of this Blue Jay, um, I could do a lot more smooth gradation here. It's breaking down because of that JPEG. So knowing that I want to try and um, cover that a little bit. So the Morning Dew was the one I ended up choosing because it gave me this really sort of cool look. But you could keep flipping through. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat is dry. I'm talking a lot here. You can see how quickly it works as well. Right? So a lot of these actually work very well with this image, but the one that I liked was the morning dew. So I'm going to start there and then edit from there. So then just click edit. Now the first thing I want to do is composition. Okay. Because what's happening here is um, I feel like it's tilting a little bit. I feel like it's a little bit crooked. So the composition tool in Luminar is actually AI. Okay, So if you want Luminar to try and do your crop for you, just click this button and let's see what happens. Okay, so I find what happens is it crops, but it doesn't necessarily place it in the right place. So I'm going to move that over and that's kind of similar to what I would do. And then I'm going to correct the perspective in terms, this one here is correcting the tilt. So I'm going to just click it and see what happens. Okay, so notice how it corrected that. Okay, and I like what it's doing, but I'm just going to take a little bit of the sky off. Okay, so it's a little bit more sky than on the bottom, but not so much sky. And then to accept it, just hit enter. Okay, now another thing that I want to do is clean up the image a little bit because there's a stick or something floating in the water, maybe like a duck over here, and you've got quite a bit, I want to show you what's going on here, um, you've got quite a bit of stuff going on in your image in terms of your sensor is dirty, so check your sensor because there's like a thing, a fingerprint or something here, okay, so you want to, I'm going to erase those, okay. So I'm going to use the erase tool like I did on fills. I'm going to zoom in. You always want to zoom in so that you can see what you're erasing. And then I make my, I'm using that uh, square bracket key. I'm going to erase the duck and I'm going to erase this stick. 
and I try and do a couple of things at a time with the erase tool. Don't do too much. Let it think about it. If you do 10 different spots and it does eight of them great and two of them as a miss, you have to undo. Okay, so if you don't like what it's done, just undo. But don't do too many at a time. Okay, so now I want to get rid of this blobby thing over here. So it should do a good job on that. Wait for it. So now I'm actually going to erase these things in the water here too. Um, because I just find that they're sort of at the edge and a little bit distracting. So the erase tool does a really good job of analyzing. It's like if you use Photoshop, it's like the content aware tool. And I find that it does a better job than Lightroom's um, cloning tool, cloning or healing. Okay, so now just with a couple of clicks and some erasing, we've got this really neat sort of blue toned image, okay? I'll show you the vignette tool that I mentioned that you can move around inside of Luminar that you can't do that in Lightroom. So my little trick for vignettes is turn the feather down to zero and then you can see the edge of it, okay? So what that means is the feather is how it gradates. So I'm not feathering it, it's got a hard edge. Then I can adjust the size the roundness and the position. Okay, so it gives me this little crosshairs. So I'm going to put the vignette more over here, maybe not quite so small. Then I'm going to put the feather back up quite high. So now you can see what it's doing. It's darkening those edges again, right? And maybe to scale it back just a tiny bit. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to undo this one. Okay, atmosphere. I'll go back to put this in. Atmosphere, what it's doing is it's adding like a layer of fog, which could work in this case. So it tries to analyze um, the image and you can actually add layered fog, which is actually kind of cool. So the more you drag up the depth, I'll just show you what's happening. It actually comes forward in the image, right? So how cool is that? So maybe I will leave a little bit of fog. That's nice. Now I could do a sky replacement in this one or I could add some birds or clouds, but I think for me it's very mystical and soft feeling and I don't want to, to add any of that. But what I do want to add is what's called the structure that I mentioned earlier, but I only want it on the part that is the land and the um, this dock. Okay, so again I'm going to mask it. This time I'm going to paint it in. Okay, so before I erased it from where I didn't want it, and how I decide whether I erase or I paint in is which part is smaller, because basically I want to do less painting, right? So the area that I want this to apply to is smaller than where I want it to erase. Okay, so I'm just going to go real quick here. Okay, so I'm going to show you a couple of things. I'm going to paint over the trees and the dock. Okay, notice I'm making my brush smaller when I go out to the dock. And then I'm going to lower the opacity so that when I do the reflection, it's not quite as structured or sharp. Okay, So it's not applying as much. Now I'm going to copy this. So I'm copying the mask. So I can use that mask on anything else. Okay, So if I want to apply some details, as in I want to sharpen it even more. Okay, So I'm going to add some sharpening but you don't want to sharpen the sky. So again, I'm going to take this to extreme to show you what happens. Okay, so when we are sharpening the sky, you start to get more pixelation in those areas. But if I do the mask and I paste in the same mask that I had before, okay, so now it's not applying to the sky. Oops. Now the mask is not applying to the sky and we're only sharpening the same areas. Okay, so obviously I'm not going to go that far and just about like that. Okay. So it's a subtle thing, but it brings those details out because when I go to apply another filter that I'm going to do shortly, I'm going to be blurring the image a little bit and it's going to keep those details in here. Okay. So my vignette's good, structure, light, all those things are good. Okay, so it is applying a lot, which is that morning dew, so you can see what it's doing. It's really giving it that blue and brightening it up. So it's giving it that really misty morning feeling. So we could dial that back a little bit if we want and adjust it. But what I'm gonna add here is what's called mystical. 
This is a filter I love. So I'm going to take it to extreme so you can see what it does. It's adding this really sort of glowy effect, right? So if I wanted that to apply strongly, it really adds to that foggy, uh, magical feeling, right? I think that's true extreme. I usually apply it around 30, but in this case, I find higher really works for this image. I could apply a film grain as well if I want, but I think I want to keep it soft and the film grain tends to uh, take away from that. Okay? If you want to undo anything, just slide the amount back to zero or use this little back arrow, which basically undoes everything on that tool. Okay? So now let's look at our before and after. Okay, so before the image was very gray and now I've turned it into this sort of glowy blue, right? Um, I'm going to show you a couple of more tricks. So somebody asked about applying two textures. Yes, we certainly can do that. Okay, so we can go and apply a texture. I should have pre-selected some textures for you guys here. I was not thinking. Um, so these are in my Cuba pack. So when I select one from this set. I have an idea of which one I want of this set. I want something sort of crackly. Um, these are all from Cuba. So C Cuba is full of texture. That one might be kind of cool. Uh, that one's kind of cool. Okay, so this one's got some blue in it already, which might be kind of neat. Uh, let's try this one. Okay, so when you apply it, oops, when you apply it, like I said, it comes in at 50% opacity. Make sure you open the advanced settings because that's where the blend mode comes into play. Okay. You can also flip the texture upside down. Okay. So if you would rather have it in a different orientation. Okay. Yeah, I don't like the darkness in the sky. Let's keep it down the bottom. So let's change the blend mode. Okay. So darken means that wherever the texture is darker than the original image, that's where the texture is going to show up. Okay, so you notice that it's only showing in part part areas, right? Multiply and color burn are similar. Lighten is going to show the texture only where it's lighter than the original image. So now you're just seeing the white bits, right? Overlay kind of is a combination. It adds more contrast. And what I'm gonna do on this one is dial down the contrast and actually just dial down the opacity of this one so it's a bit softer. You know, I don't like the saturation that it's adding. And it's adding a lot of contrast. Okay, so playing around with that one, not my favorite. Let's just change to normal. There we go, I like that better. Okay, so we keep the softness down. And as the same with any of the other tools, we can mask it, right? We can erase it from anywhere. So if I decide I don't want this texture over this land part and the lighthouse, I can erase it from there, okay? Or if I want to soften this dark area down here, it's too much, okay? That's pretty good, okay? So now if I wanted to apply another texture, I'll just show you how to do it. You just close that one and add another one, okay? Okay. So I hope that gives you an idea of what to do with this kind of image and how to apply a texture. Again, something that you cannot do inside of Lightroom because that's a, a layer effect. Click this video over here. I demonstrated doing a sky replacement in a landscape photo using the built-in Luminar AI template system. You'll see how easy it is to quickly transform your photo with just a couple of clicks. Until next time, Keep taking photos.